What's good, guys? Welcome to boot camp. Who knows what day, but all I know is we are talking about wrapping up our liquidity. Um, little lesson, little series within this boot camp. So, after what we have learned, um, are also guys, look, pretty little microphone. I'm, I'm, you see, I'm spending money on you guys. I don't, I didn't need this. I was fine with my trash ass setup, but guess what? I was getting shit on when all you guys were saying your face cam is ass, um, your your setup is ass. Dude, come on, bro. I, I used to just trade on my phone. You guys are trying to make me up my shit. Um, but anyways, today is part three of our liquidity series, and then we will move from there over to our fair value gap series, and then over to our order block series, and then over to our equilibrium series. So we're we're starting to add the building blocks that we need to actually place trades. And that's going to be part of uh, what we're doing today. Pretty much just talking about, um, you know, the full overview of liquidity, seeing how, um, how we can like use it to our advantage really, because now, right after the first day, we understand what it is and why we want to use it right after the second day, we, we can see, directly how it works on the charts right we can see okay a high gets taken out and then what happens right you can see orders get filled through break of structure through market structure shift whatever you want to say and then price changes direction so that's more of what we're going to be doing today literally just spotting it out on the chart helping you guys be able to spot it easier um and then translate that into how you could potentially take a trade off of it again i don't want you guys to think this is a strategy it's not it's a piece that we can plug in to a strategy, okay? This is not end all be all, okay? So, I mean, literally just starting off, I don't know if you guys can see this, but pretty fucking obvious. We see boom, leg down, break of structure up, closing all the way up here, price rallies, okay? It's, again, it's very, very easy to see this on the chart. It's when, in action, you know, can you actually see it and can you react and actually take the trade correctly off of it? Um, and that's what we're going to be, you know, trying to help you guys do. Uh, let's get rid of my trade from this morning. Schmink. Get rid of this trade that I didn't take. Get rid of anything on here. Cool. All right. So, oops. What the fuck? All right, so to start off, we will cover liquidity on the S&P 500, just because it's pretty easy to spot um, on high time frames, and it's it's really relatively easy to to show how you could potentially take a trade off of this and how it works. Okay, so first of all, right, why do we want to use liquidity? Right, just a little recap, because that is where the market makers are able to fill their orders, right? Because there's a bunch of people exiting the market and there's a bunch of people entering the market. Okay, perfect. There's a lot of money getting transacted through the market versus when liquidity isn't getting swept or getting, you know, induced, then, you know, it's kind of chippy choppy. Okay, ticky tacky. Okay, they aren't able to completely, you know, change direction of the market. All right. So <clears throat> what we're looking for, right, is highs and lows within the market, right? Because that's where people are going to be entering long um, and that's where people are going to be entering short and then that's also where people are going to be getting stopped out, right? So with that being said, right, we are technically looking to label highs and lows as liquidity, right? And most importantly, prominent highs and lows okay so you're probably saying well how do we know what's prominent well it varies from time frame to time frame on what is prominent or not but if you just look at the chart okay it's it's relatively easy to to just mark out what highs are prominent and what lows are prominent This is getting kind of messy. I'm just going to work with what we put on right now. So as we can see, prominent high right here. Why? Because it's the start of this big trend. Okay. We come down, we come up and make a like double top, pretty prominent high. We come down, make a lower low. Okay. Then we come up and take out this prominent high, making a new prominent high. And then what does market do? 
rally even lower. Okay, boom, we can get rid of these lows. Okay, then what does price, price do? We make a relatively prominent low right here, and then a relatively prominent high right here. You could can argue that these are prominent highs, but you know, whatever. Um, relative prominent high right here, relative prominent low right here. Obviously, we push lower because this is a downtrend. Okay, what does do? price do? Come up, takes out this high, right? What happens? Breaks structure to the downside, price falls. Now we have this as a prominent high and this as a prominent low. Okay, price comes down, makes a lower low. Okay, I would also consider this a prominent high um, because it broke structure on the daily time frame. Um, okay, what happens? Price rallies up, takes out the prominent high, comes down a little bit. Okay, now we've pushed past that. Where is price likely going to draw towards? This high, right? We can think of liquidity essentially as a magnet for price. That is where price is drawing to because that is where the market makers want to push price so they can get their orders filled. Make sense? Cool, right? So any form of liquidity, right? Consider it a magnet for price, right? We're not considering it, oh, buy, oh, sell. We're saying, okay, this is an area where orders could get filled for us to potentially take a trade. It doesn't mean when this high gets hit, we press sell. It doesn't mean when these lows get hit, and press buy, right? Because if you did that, you'd lose way more than you win, right? We wait for these areas of liquidity to get hit. And then we wait for confirmation through break of structure, through other confluences, right? That we'll talk about later in this. Okay, we wait for those confluences to give us the confirmation that liquidity has been swept and that orders have been filled. That makes sense, right? So when we see a liquidity sweep, when we see these prominent highs and lows get taken out, it's safe to assume, okay, I'm now going to wait for confirmation that orders have been filled because then price is going to go in the opposite direction. That makes sense? Cool, okay, and that's all liquidity is. So how can we use this to our advantage for entries? Well, I just talked about it, right? We, we wait for those, those prices to get hit and then we see what price reacts off of it. If price doesn't react, perfect, no trade. If price does react, perfect, act on it, take a trade, right? And then on the contrary, how can we use liquidity for take profits, right? If, if it's a magnet for price above, right? If we, if we think, okay, yeah, highs will, attract, will att attract price because that's what it wants to seek out in order to go lower. If we're saying, oh yeah, this is a, this is a relative bear market right now, right? If we're saying, oh yeah, this is a relatively bear market, <coughs> I think price will go lower, right? Then we're waiting for highs to get taken out. But then, right, when, let's say we do find a trade. Let's say we're able to find an entry, whatever, here. Where are we, where are we going to target, right? If we think price is going to look, go lower, if liquidity is a magnet, then it's probably going to start seeking out these lows. Why? Because just like how market makers need you guys to be entering and exiting for them to enter orders, it's the same thing with exiting, right? Because if they exit, if they exit at a random point at in the chart, right, without a low or a high being like an area where they where they take orders out, right? If they were to just you know, exit right now, right? Price would probably drop, price would move in the other direction. They still need people entering and exiting the market just like they do to, to fill their orders, to, keep, to, to sell their orders, right? To exit their orders, to exit their position, right? Without price just making a big move after those positions get closed out. Does that make sense? Because same thing with them wanting to go, go short at the highs, they also want to you know, close, right, if they're, if, they're clo um, if they're going short, they're going to be closing their position at lows. Why? Because there's going to be people going short, there's also people going to be exiting. Lo siento. Um, sorry, sorry, wow. I've been here for too long already. Sorry, I'm sorry um, for the language shift. Um, I was just talking to this lady on the phone in Spanish, so. My Spanish is not nearly as good as what it used to be, but it gets me around here. Um, so does that make sense? Right? So if we're looking, if we're looking for shorts, we're using liquidity 
to be the, the peak of our interest, right? We take out a high, we get a break of structure to the downside, perfect. And then like any other confluence, perfect. We can go short, okay? And then where are we targeting? The lows, right? Because that's where they can exit their position. Just like how they were able to fill their position at the high, they have to exit their position at the lows. Make sense? Cool, cool. Okay, so let's just go through more examples of this just working. And we can even go over the um, examples right here that we already marked out, right? So we had a prominent high right here. As we can see, price pushes up. Where do we get the break of structure? If you guys remember that portion, boom, we get a break of structure right here. This was the most recent low. We get a closure below. Perfect. You can either enter off that, enter off of, you know, some sort of... off of some, some sort of fair value gap on the four hour within these candles, right? We see that get filled, chop, 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 break down. Okay, whatever, whatever you want, right? We get a liquidity sweep, then a break of structure. Those are pretty standard, okay? Then, where do we target? Next previous prominent lows. Price draws to it just like a fucking magnet. Moving forward, okay, where, where is our next, previous prominent lows that get made prior to the break of structure to the upside on the daily right here where's the where's the prominent high that gets made on the daily right here okay we see price move up past it got one pretty far past it but then we get a break of structure after another form of liquidity gets swept right we have highs right here highs right here right we push past this one don't get much of a reaction we push past take out this one we do get a reaction break of structure to the downside you know whether you find uh an imbalance within here, this daily candle filled this fair value gap within here, whatever you want, okay? It filled orders, okay? We see the confirmation of it with the break of structure. Where does price go to? Where does it get magnetized to? Previous prominent low. Now we have previous prominent lows right here. Prominent highs all the way up here and some other prominent highs in between, um, but we've already pushed past them, right? We can see that, right? We had this prominent high gets taken out. We failed to reach this low. We're just chopping up. Um, and now we're pushing for this high. Okay, so you could argue that this is a prominent low and this is a prominent low and none of these highs have caused a reaction yet. So now this is the one that we're looking for. Cool. Does that make sense? Perfect. Let's show it. Now let's show this happening on a smaller time frame, not just the daily, because this happens on literally every single time frame. And it can be used to your advantage, just like this. Okay. We're looking at the four hour on GBP USD. What's the first thing you see? Big rally up and then a big dump. I wonder why that happened. Okay. We have boom, highs right here. Okay. You're probably saying it never got hit. Exactly. Look on the one hour. Sweep. When's our break? Boom, with this candle right here. Wait for some type of retracement on up. Right, we get a break of structure with this candle. Boom, push back up, hits this order block, capitulates. Taking out prominent low filling this imbalance, filling this imbalance, so many areas for you to take profit here, but we're just talking about liquidity right now. There will be a whole section on how to take profits later. Okay, does that make sense? Same thing here, right? Boom, we have highs right here, barely gets wicked. Price, okay, where's our break of structure? We get a break right here. Right, we get a we have a low right here, down candle, up candle. This is our low, most recent low. That's you know applied to a break of structure. As you can see, none of these lows got broken. This low gets broken. You can scale into the five minute. Boom, imbalance gets filled right within here. Find some sort of confirmation. Boom, go short. Where? There's lows right here. There's a full freaking imbalance within here. All of that right all that good stuff and and we'll get into that later i'm literally just trying to show you guys 
how liquidity works and how you can use the draw on liquidity for taking profits and then also for entering positions. Same thing with gold right here. Lows, boom. We see, boom, price drives in. Boom, quick regain up, Cl closure above right here. Yes, we get some dip down into this imbalance. This is probably where you would have wanted to get your orders filled. Okay, find some sort of entry within here and we'll go over that. Where does price draw back up to? Boom, previous highs. Once, it, once those previous highs get hit, boom, orders liquidated, orders filled, now we're chopping. Simple, simple boys, very, very simple. Um, and it's and it gets a lot easier when when you start being able to just like spot this like at the back of your hand Like you you should be able to pull up a chart and just be like oh, that's a liquidity sweep Yep, that's a liquidity sweep liquidity sweep liquidity sweep, right? You should be able to see these like like none other sweep rally <coughs> What's this right here? Oh sweep rally You know, oh, what's this right here sweep drop? Sweet retracement. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's really funny how easy how easy it is and how comfortable you get starting to see this. But it's one thing, you know, being able to see it. Oh, sweet fall. <laughs> What's this? Oh, sweet rally. You can't tell me that this shit doesn't work, right? You really can't. You, you cannot tell me that this shit does not work and it happens on every single time frame, right? Sweep, rally. Like, I see this shit happen on, fifth, on the 15 minute. I see this shit happen on the one minute. Oh, damn, that's crazy. There's a low, sweep, rally. <laughs> oh, damn, that's crazy. These highs, sweep, drop. It... It's how these markets move. It's how orders get, get filled. It's how markets literally flow. Damn, that's a cool low. Sweep, rally. <laughs> I'll take that low. I'll fill my orders. You know? That's all this is. Okay, so... Again, that was just me trying to show you guys, like, examples of all of this going down. Um, and hopefully you guys have a better idea of liquidity... Again, now homework isn't just seeing the liquidity sweep. It's not saying there it is and just marking it on several different time frames. Now I want you to try and pair it with something. Try and find five liquidity sweeps on whatever pair you use. I don't care what time frame. Find five liquidity sweeps, okay? And then see how you could have, you know, gained more confidence for a trade you see the sweep and then look into the price action that follows okay there was a break of structure that's a confluence for me to trade okay and then after the break of structure it filled an imbalance and reacted off of it that's where i'm entering okay we got a sweep of liquidity a break of structure it hit an order block reacted boom that's where i'm entering simple as that that fucking easy it's that fucking easy okay and that's really what our strategy is going to get into. But you guys don't necessarily completely understand some of the, some of the logistical things um, that we're going to cover. But that's it for now, okay? That is Liquidity Explained. Hopefully, you guys have a good grasp on this. If you don't, rewatch the three videos that we've made on it. And then also go back and rewatch my how to spot liquidity sweeps, just like very first, you know, video that I put, um, that I put up like one of my first videos on YouTube. Okay. So if you're having trouble with this, it's okay. There's a reason why I split this up into three parts. Okay. Understand why we want to use it and understand where it lies within the market. And then understand that liquidity it's fine to mark out every single high and low, but not every single high and low will be used as liquidity to fill orders. And that's why we wait for a confluence. That's why we wait for a break of structure. That's why we wait for a fair value gap, then a reaction. That's why we wait for an order block, then a reaction. That's why we wait for all that stuff. Does that make sense? Cool. You guys know your homework. Find, find five examples of a liquidity sweep trade setup or a liquidity sweep and confluence for why it went in the direction it did. Get that done. 
take some notes, and then let's get after it. All right, I'll see you boys tomorrow for some discipline.